But first, imagine being able to create replacement parts in your shed for your household appliances or even for your car. Well, as Jonica Newby finds out, it's not only possible, it's inexpensive and easy to do. I'm in Bath. I've never been to Bath, so what I realise I need right now is a souvenir bath toy. Now, I could just buy one, but where's the fun in that? When you can print one. It's been called the invention that will bring down global capitalism, start a second industrial revolution and save the planet. Maybe a slight exaggeration, but there's no doubt the world will be a very different place when each one of us has a 3D printer. This pretty little village just outside Bath is an unlikely hothouse of industrial subversion. Hi. Hello. And its How chief subversive, even Hi. less likely. So, this mm -hmm. is the thing that's going to print my bath souvenir. It is, yes. It's called RepRap. It's a 3D printer. So what it does is it takes this plastic filament mm -hmm. here, it melts it and deposits it. It can build virtually any three-dimensional shape that you care to mention. And this is the thing that's going to bring down global capitalism? Well, according to The Guardian, that must be true. <laughs> it must been... be true. And Adrian well, makes this incendiary around. device for a mere 300 pounds. So it ain't pretty. No, not supposed to be. It's supposed to be functional. But it's cheap. But it is cheap. The fact is, 3D printing has been around for a decade, but it's been expensive specialist kit, priced upward of $200,000. Then along comes engineer Adrian Boyer, who dreams of making it available to any bloke or blokeess with a shed by designing a 3D printer that prints itself. Well, it prints all the complex plastic bits, and the metal bits holding it together you can get from a hardware store. And here's the really radical bit. It's essentially free. The reason why we decided to give all the designs away was really two reasons. One was frightfully high and moral and all that sort of stuff, which is pretty uncharacteristic for me. Um, <laughs> and that was, was actually going to be a very powerful technology. And if you have people who have access to it, and people who don't, that makes for bad things happening. Anyway, after about 10 seconds after I'd had that higher moral thought, I realised that I had to make it free anyway. You've got a machine that copies itself and you try and prevent people from exploiting it. You're basically saying you want to spend the whole of your life in court, got better things to do, so made it free. And to give you an idea of what the future may hold, this is a true story that happened recently to Adrian's daughter. You had something go wrong with your car recently? Yeah, one of the plastic bits just snapped off. So uh, it was quite annoying when that happened. <laughs> so decided rather than going to the car dealership that we would design a new part mm -hmm. and print it off. So how long did it take you? Uh, probably a couple of hours, Is including the design time. Yeah. yeah. And what did it cost? Probably about 10 pence. 10 p. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine being able to design or download the software for any fiddly little plastic part. Right, I'm going to make my bath souvenir. So I've downloaded the recipe, I've got the ingredients, got the appliance. Let's cook. While that's printing... How cool is that? Let's check out what's happening to 3D printing in the smart end of town. Over in Melbourne, this is in Nishin, where they're sporting one of the latest commercial 3D printers. You can really see the detail, can't you? So let's see what it can do for me. Well, we've decided to make a 3D print of my head. And because the scanner will have a bit of trouble picking up little fiddly wisps of hair, we've agreed on a French plait. Here we go. Three, two, one. I have to say, this is unexpectedly freaky, seeing my head captured inside a computer. I feel like I'm in a real-life version of The Matrix. The first scanner captures everything in super fine detail. Then a second scanner gets an overall picture. Now the software starts integrating it all. It's amazing technology, getting better and cheaper by the year, and it's now going well beyond simple plastics to resins, even metals. 
sides. So in the case of Formula One teams, they will design pieces, build them on rapid prototype machine so they can have that quick turnaround between races. And they're already being used to make bespoke body parts and many other amazing high-tech designs. So this is a haptic device. It gives you force yeah. feedback. So you feel the contours. Oh, there we go. There's my cheek. Oops. So in fact, if you want to click that button. <gasps> oh! <laughs> OK. So you can manipulate. Oh, my goodness. That's freaky. Uh-oh. <laughs> Pretty easy to screw your face up on this. Can I have elf ears? Let's see. Sold. That's how I want it. It's here. And by the time I get home, there's a present waiting for me. Look at that. It's revolutionising some workplaces. But the real revolution will come when we all have one. And this, to me, is the most exciting thing about all this. You may notice I am holding a milk bottle made of plastic. Their next project is to design a downloadable shredder that will take this bottle and turn it into the substrate for the printer. And here's an idea. When your children's feet yeah. grow, as they so inconveniently yeah. do, you shred the sandals, chuck in another milk bottle and make a bigger pair. That is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think the music and the media industries have been shaken up by free downloads, consider the future implications of this. Now, think about how a conventional item like the coat hook gets to you. Somebody goes and drills an oil well. Somebody else turns it into plastic. Somebody takes that plastic and turns it into coat hooks, and then they send it to a hardware store. Now, suppose you can make your own coat hooks. You suddenly bypassed an enormous great chunk of the value-adding supply chain. That's why people say, and I'm not sure I believe them, incidentally, <laughs> that it might be the end of capitalism. Now it's ready. My plastic protest against the hegemony of mass-manufactured materialism. Here we go. A bath toy from Bath. <laughs> <laughs> Just what I wanted. And I'm going to keep this bath souvenir just so I can bring it out when I'm 80 and say to the kiddies, there was a time before 3D printing, you know? Oh, Gran, 